Are Ryu and Ken also dead? Fatality. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of Wake Up 3. You have reached round 47 and we are your hosts, Molly and Cam. And we are a fighting game podcast from a couple who loves fighting games. That is right. And I believe this week Cam has pretty much everything on the episode. It's a big episode this week yeah, for Cam in particular. It's a big episode. We are going to be talking about one of my favorite Street Fighter characters, but we are going to start things off with a mix-up like we usually do. So I've got the mix-up and let's see if you're ready for it. Okay. I kind of mentioned earlier to you before we before we started recording, I hope you're ready for a difficult choice and uh, yeah, we'll see. So... Three out of six of the mainline Street Fighter games are going to be deleted from history. And it's up to you to decide. Are they going to be the even-numbered games or the odd-numbered games? They will remain in everyone's memories, so they'll know what they've lost. (laughs) That makes it so much worse. It does. Why it's a terrible (laughs) mix-up. Yeah, this is difficult because I like Third Strike a whole lot. And right, a lot of people do. Yeah, I would say it would be hard to delete that one, but also the even numbers are pretty good. <laughs> I have not played four, but two and six, very strong, I would say. Yeah, for sure. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do the evens. I'm going to keep the evens. Okay, fair enough. I think that's respectable. I don't think that there would be a bad choice either way. I know there are yeah. a, there are a lot of haters of five. Um, I personally oh. kind of like it. Okay. But, you know, I played a less traditional character in that game in Akira. So okay. maybe that's yeah. why. But I figured that would be a difficult question because Third Strike is so good. It's such a good game. Did I answer how you thought I would? I think so. But I I figured it would be a difficult question at the very least. I thought maybe you'd shock me just because of Third Strike, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well. Sorry, I guess I just good results. No, it's cool. Deleted Third Strike. Yeah, everyone does remember that 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 Street Fighter One, Third Strike, and Five just uh, blipped out of existence and can't be played anymore. Mm. (laughs) Anyways, that's what I've got for the mix up this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Do you think you would have kept Third Strike? Ah, oh, would you choose man. the odds? It would be tough. Like it would. It, that's honestly a tough one. I I would be really tempted to pick the odds, but I like you said, two and six are both great. I love six right now, and with Akuma coming out this coming week, I'm all the more hyped for it. But aside okay. from that, let's talk about our week in fighting games. All right. What has your week looked like, Kim? I have played a large variety of fighting games this week. I played a lot of the Capcom Fighting Collection. I played a lot of Cyberbots this week and Darkstalkers as well, actually. I just played a lot of the arcade ladder, just kind of messing around with each character and figuring out who I liked a little bit more. And I was really having fun with Cyberbots. That game's cool. Aside from that, mostly MK1. With MK1, my Baraka Jax, it's been going relatively strong, but I have been considering picking some other cameos. Not necessarily Movado. Movado just came out, by the way. We didn't talk about that last week, but Movado's out. He's pretty Mm -hmm. cool. I like his trap move, but I don't know that he's necessarily a good fit for Baraka. So I'm trying to find a new cameo for Baraka. I'm not really sure who I'm going to settle on just yet. Where do you think this comes from? Well, with Jax, I feel like I've taken it about as far as I can get in terms of, like, damage. And I can't really get any solid extensions off of that because, well, he does have the, like, the backbreaker combo. I can't really get anything great off of it usually based on where it happens on the screen with Baraka. So, I don't know. I'm just looking for, I'm looking for better extensions, basically. Okay. So you feel like you're kind of outgrowing Jax. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm outgrowing Jax a little bit. Mm. I've always enjoyed being able to call him out for the ground pound and then just avoid it and hit hit people with that because 
I mean, I'd say you'd be alarmed at how often people get hit by it, but you personally wouldn't be because you use Jax too. <laughs> Jax too. <laughs> I'm evolving and I'm trying to figure out how to do more like setups and extensions. Aside from that, I have been playing Street Fighter 6 when I can. Been trying to learn more as DJ, but I feel like I'm honestly a little bit frustrated. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just that I've been really looking forward to Akuma coming out and since he's not Akuma, I'm just like, "Man, I don't know what this is. Like I can't I don't I don't want this right now. I don't know exactly what it is, but No, oh, I think that is what it is for sure because you start thinking and like looking forward to a different character and really one that's like very different from DJ. Oh yeah. It would be one thing if you were playing Ken up until now where it would just kind of be like a jumping off. Right. And you could still prepare. Just a more aggressive <laughs> Ken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, Which is honestly kind of terrifying to think about. But yeah, right now you're just kind of in the trenches, unfortunately, with DJ, and it doesn't help that he's got nerfs looming on the horizon, apparently. Yeah, and we so, don't know what they are yet, but yeah. I'm sure you're looking forward to your lily buffs. That, as of yet, we don't know what they are. Those mysterious lily buffs that are going to make her number one, or at least a character that more people will want to use. Hopefully. I believe Maybe. is the, is the goal. <laughs> Aside from that, how has your week in fighting games been? Because I feel like I've been kind of all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I have really just stuck to MK. Okay. Um, not too much Street Fighter. I think mostly I've just been kind of more in the study mode of I've been looking at other players who play Lily. and Okay. Yeah, kind of just studying some other Lily players, if you will. Gotcha. I had mentioned that I really didn't follow any Lily players before, didn't really see any Lily stuff, but now I'm kind of in that mode of, like, just consuming. Anyways, I've been mostly playing MK1. I say mostly, but it's really just, like, here and there. But most recently we did a play sesh where I started out as Shao, and I tried Movado with him. I think it's pretty cool. And with yeah. Shao, you... You don't have to worry about losing that health as much because he already has an abundance of health. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of a good fit for Xiao. I feel like what he can do actually complements Xiao quite yeah. a bit too. Yeah. I love the trap. Like, I feel like that's the most enticing part of his moveset for me, for sure. But I think Xiao would probably be the only character that I would consider using him with because I don't want to lose health as other people. Gotcha. But... Then we played, so it was Shao versus Baraka. You already know how that went. <laughs> and then <laughs> then we did I was Sub Zero, and I'm not sure, I can't remember who you picked next, but I ended up picking Sub Zero and Scorpion because I was like, you know what? I don't know the last time I played. I, I literally don't think I had played Scorpion since the release of the game. I played Sub Zero second. And Sub Zero is like so, he just feels so good to play. There's just such a difference where you feel like, okay, this character has been, <laughs> this is a beta character. Like they've been around, you know? Yeah, they've been around. They've been the in development forever yeah. because they feel great. Then I was like, okay, now I kind of want to play Scorpion. Scorpion's gotten some stuff in the most recent patch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just. A really great way to put it, but <laughs> he's gotten a little help, it seems, so I wanted to see how he felt, and especially after playing Sub-Zero, so I did that, and yeah, Scorpion's pretty nice to play, too. He's not my favorite, but Sub-Zero's fun. I, I could play Sub-Zero. Yeah, he is fun. He's a lot of fun. That's pretty much my week in fighting games. I did have a fighting game thought of the week I wrote down. So, New my segment. fighting game. <laughs> New segment. It's the fighting game thought of the week. Are you ready? Here we go. Liu Kang remembered MK11, Baraka saying, I like it raw, and proceeded to craft an existence wherein Baraka was a father. Oh Thank boy. you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. <laughs> Speaking of fathers... Yeah, I really what? don't have anything else to say about that. Yeah, I was thinking, like, where are you going with this? Akuma's not a dad. That we know of. Oh, shit. 
Yeah, this isn't the Heihachi episode. Right, yeah, Kuma's no... He's no Heihachi. We haven't done a Heihachi episode yet, by the way. But maybe someday. Anyways. That'll be part of, like, a series of the whole Mishima family tree. Yeah, I need, <laughs> yeah, I, I need to spend, like, a month locked away just, like, researching the entire Mishima history. Yeah. And, We're gonna like, rent you a little castle and you can just... A cabin in the woods. <laughs> Just yeah, isolated. Isolated from everything. So I can just research the Mishimas. <laughs> Give me every Tekken game and all of the strategy guides and books and all of it. And I'll just absorb it all for like a month. Anyways. And now for the demon. Goki. Or Akuma, <laughs> as he's known in the West. We're going to talk about Akuma today, which I'm sure you know. How much do you know about Akuma. I think my Akuma knowledge is kind of like halfway there. <laughs> okay. I would say it's pretty superficial. Okay. So you, you probably, would you say that you know him more in terms of like his move set yeah. and recognizability basically, mm-hmm. but less so in terms of like what he's done and lore and other yeah. games he's been in? Yeah. I know okay. a couple of like stories about his lore. Okay. Uh, but that's it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I want to say that he's five foot ten to start. And he varies between 180 pounds and 200 pounds, depending on the game. So Hmm. he's like 200 pounds right now. Okay. Probably a little bit heavy for like a 5'10", but... So you're saying in Street Fighter 6, he's 200 pounds? Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. He's huge. He looks bulked up. He's huge. He's... Yeah. He's a wall. He's like a brick wall. The only time that I've actually played Akuma is in... Tekken 7 and I would always refer to him as like a tiny character which you, mm. you would always be like what do you what do you mean? Yeah, like what are you talking about? Well, he tucks himself into a little ball he, he just seems smaller than everybody but yeah I, now yeah, he's bigger he was so. probably 180 there maybe he was 180 there because that was one of his older <laughs> they were basing, off, basing it off of his older mm-hmm. looks yeah. that's probably what it was Yeah. So. now he's big now he's big Oh, also, I did want to say it's been five episodes since our last Shodo episode. Oh, okay. Right. Since we covered Dan. So <laughs> that's all. If you want to listen to another Shodo episode, listen to us talk about Dan in episode 42. That one was a lot of fun as well. Yeah. But, the lesser yeah. Shodo, Dan. <laughs> the lesser Shodo, that's right. Here's Akuma, the master of the fist. The demon. Akuma means demon or devil. He's got red eyes and usually has red hair, too. In Street Fighter VI, he's got white hair, which is kind of cool. I think it looks good. He wears a gi, a necklace of prayer beads, and the symbol on his back says heaven. And then sometimes if he's like the boss version, it'll say shin instead. So that's what that says on your shirt? Yeah. Cam is wearing (laughs) his Akuma shirt for this recording. Yes, I was excited. I never knew that that meant heaven. It's kind of weird, right? Because yeah. Akuma. Yeah. He shouldn't Demon. be anywhere near heaven, right? <laughs> Demon. Heaven. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. Okay. Okay. I can't explain it. I should say, though, that occasionally when he's in his Shin Akuma form, which is usually what he's a boss, it says Shin on his back, which is God. It's like God Akuma. Where he's like maximum power, yeah. hella strong. I don't know. Basically, just like Akuma, but even more terrifying. He'll shoot like double fireballs. He likes martial arts training, the Satsui no Hado, strong opponents, becoming stronger, and Kazumi Mishima. Whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. we were just talking about the reason. Yep, yep. Yeah, that, that's included in his list of likes that because it's so a canonical funny. thing now. So, yeah, there you go. He's crossed over into okay. another world and come back. Oh, my God. Dislikes. He dislikes his brother Gokin for not using their fighting style as intended, which he believes is to kill. His brother or Akuma? Akuma. Okay. Akuma thinks it's to kill. He's like, we need to use this power to become as strong as we possibly can, even if it means killing. Especially that, probably. Mm -hmm. He also dislikes weaklings, anyone that interferes with his training. So, rest in peace, world tour guy. (laughs) His master, Gotetsu. Shadow Geist, which is a character from Street Fighter EX. M. Bison, 
And the reason he dislikes M. Bison is because he uses tech for his power. It's not natural. So he thinks that's kind of like cheating. Okay. He doesn't so respect it. He does not respect him and he hates M. Bison for that reason. And he also hates Heihachi and Kazuya. But that's more because he owes a debt to Kazumi. Let's also talk about his creation a little bit. For the final update of Street Fighter 2... Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, they wanted to create a new character, a hidden character, a boss. And they wanted it to be a villain, but different than M. Bison. Kind of more a reflection of Ryu, but like amped up and evil, and like what if he gave into his power? So they came up with Akuma. He was actually both playable and a boss in this game. To play him, you had to enter a secret code, and it was kind of weird. It wasn't just like press a button, press, you know, like press a series of buttons. You had to sit on the roster, you had to go on, say, Ryu for three seconds, and then move to another character for three seconds, and then move to another character for three seconds, and you had to do that across six different characters and make sure you timed it right. And then select eventually like Dalsim or something, and then it would turn into Akuma instead wow so he would just okay. show up instead of the character you actually chose so it was like man i hope i did this 18 second thing right and yeah that's how you selected him and he was overpowered not as overpowered as the boss version but he was still overpowered and he's banned in tournaments he's more of a just kind of play for fun sort of thing he's very good in street fighter 2 in order to fight the boss version of him you have to be the first 11 opponents in arcade and get a high score or Reach Bison within 25 minutes. And I mentioned that he has a dislike of M. Bison. And actually, the first time you see him as a boss in Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, he shows up when you reach M. Bison. So it looks like you're about to fight the final boss, and Akuma warps from behind you, beats the shit out of Bison, and then Bison's body just lies there on the stage while you have to fight Akuma instead. I think that's pretty cool. And the music changes to Akuma's theme, which is called God Hand. And there's no name on his life gauge, and his portrait is completely black. Kind of a spooky little intro, isn't it? Yeah. Like, who is this guy? And then you find out once you figure out how, what the code is, then you can see that his name's Akuma. Moving on to his second appearance, X-Men Children of the Atom. This is in 1994, by the way. Both of these games have been 94 so far. And yeah, I said X-Men. His second appearance was that. You once again had to put in a weird code to play him on the character select screen, and he has the exact same sprite as his first appearance. There's also no name below his health bar, just like when he was a boss, and he's the only non-X-Men character in that game. There were no other Capcom characters in it. It was just Akuma. Hmm. So it was just another secret, hidden kind of thing. And lots of secrets to keep in 94. He did. <laughs> 1995, moving on. So we're going to go in order here by the years. In 95, he was in a couple other games. Let's start with Street Fighter Alpha. Once again, he was a secret unlockable. You had to put in a code. And I just wanted to say his ending is kind of silly. It's like a quick one-liner, and it's obviously not canon. But it just says, Akuma, after finishing off Ryu and Ken's master, travels the world searching for powerful opponents. In the end, Akuma triumphs over all. That's it. It's just really generic. He beats up their master? Yeah, he just beats up their master. I oh. guess he kills them, their master after finishing off their master. Oh. He travels the world looking for powerful opponents and eventually triumphs over everyone. Are Ryu and Ken also dead? Maybe. Probably. What the fuck? What <laughs> just, I think he just kills a bunch of strong people and then he triumphs oh, okay. over everyone. Alrighty. So that's, that's it for that ending for Street Fighter Alpha. Next up, we're remaining in 95. Street Fighter, the movie, the game. We watched the movie together for an episode, actually, one of our early ones, but he is not in that movie. No, he is not. No, he's not. They wanted to do something kind of special because Akuma is a special character. He's a secret character. And they decided to just put him in there anyways, even though he wasn't in the movie. So he is in the game, and he's just on the base roster. You don't have to do anything special. That's the first time he's ever a base roster character. 1996. Street Fighter Alpha 2. He's base roster in this game as well, and there is a more powerful Shin Akuma that takes his place as the secret boss. 
There's no extra ending for this one. All the alpha endings are just basically the same. Street Fighter EX also came out in this year. This is a 2D fighter with 3D characters, kind of like MK4. So you can kind of picture like the janky 3D models on a 2D plane. That's what that game was. I think it looks really cool. I think it looks fun. I've never played it. It's on PlayStation 1. Next up, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, another X-Men game. He's hidden in this game as well, like the previous X-Men game. This one is a 2 vs. 2 tag fighter, and it's actually technically the first installment of the Marvel vs. Capcom series. It's notable because every other character in the game has a partner, and Akuma is alone in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moving on. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. This is all 1996. Wow. Yeah. This is a puzzle game, obviously. It's Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. In this game, Akuma is the final boss, and he's also unlockable on the console versions. This game gives us a pretty great quote. I am Akuma, also a master puzzler. 1997. Street Fighter 3. Second Impact. He was not in the original Street Fighter 3. So he's in the second one, the follow-up. He's in this one as a hidden character, and Shin Akuma is a secret boss. Fun fact about the playable version of Akuma in this game, even though he is not as powerful as the boss, he's still usually banned because he's way too damn strong. Hmm. So if you were going to have a second impact tournament, you could not pick Akuma. Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. He's base roster in this, and instead of being Shin Akuma, instead of having Shin Akuma as the final boss, they decided to change things up a little bit, and they actually made Cyber Akuma as the final boss. In this one, he has a metal arm, metal eye, metal wings, and can shoot his hand like a projectile off, like it shoots off of him. The X-Men villain Apocalypse made him one of his four horsemen. Akuma becomes the horseman of death and actually overpowers Apocalypse and becomes the final boss instead. Yeah, I guess that didn't work out too well for Apocalypse. <laughs> but... Yeah, he's apparently the most unfair Akuma in the history of Capcom. He's so strong. Next, in 1997, he shows up in Super Gem Fighter Mini Mix. This is a fighting game with puzzle elements. The characters are chibi-like, just like in the previous puzzle game, and Akuma is a secret character in this. I wanted to cover his ending because it's kind of funny. He meets up with Sainko. Heisenko? I don't know how to pronounce her name, but it's the girl with the claws from Darkstalkers. He meets up with her, and she leads him to an abandoned graveyard that no one is really going to worry about what happens to it. Located deep within a forest. And she basically says, like, how do you like this place? You can practice here at night when the zombies come up. And he's like, it's perfect. And zombies start coming up around him, and he just starts, like, kicking their heads off and beating the shit out of them. So... <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. That's an interesting take on Akuma's training, just fighting zombies in a graveyard because he really doesn't have to hold back if you think about it that way. Mm -hmm. He can punch a hole right through a zombie. Yeah, I knew about that one. Okay, okay. You knew about that one. Well, maybe I should save this for the Ken episode when we eventually do one, but I found out <laughs> something about Ken in this that was really fucked up, and oh, I just want to show you. Read that single thing right here. Ken, in, what yeah, the in it. Part of it for a Ken episode. You can't hear it right now. Yeah. Only I get to know. It, I won't forget it. I was going to say, maybe I'll forget. No, I won't. You can't forget this. I can't forget it. Ken, what the fuck? Ken's a, piece, Ken's a bigger piece of shit than we thought. Yeah, he's not Tune just in later. a terrorist. <laughs> it's not just a terrorist. He's also a bigger piece of shit. <laughs> we, uh, we enjoy Ken around here, but we do love to shit on him. Okay. The next game that appears in 97. This is probably Akuma's busiest year, by the way. Looks like he was in four games in this year. Wow. The fourth one being Cyberbots Full Metal Madness. This might sound weird to you because this is a fighting game that is basically mech fighters. You pick a pilot and then you pick a mech. The pilot has nothing to do with the performance of it. It's just who sits inside it. But in this game, on the home console versions, if you input a code, you could unlock a mech that looked a lot like Akuma. It was a humanoid mech with, like, crazy spiky metal hair, the full paint job that made it look like it had, like, skin and a gi and red hair, and it looked like a big metal Akuma. A giant mech metal Akuma. And it does tatsus and fireballs and shoryukens and all the punches and, you know, 
all the Akuma moves that you would expect. And I think that's really cool for a mech fighter. Most of them have like crazy guns and you know. Oh, I also should say his name in this is Z Goki or Zero mm, Goki. Okay. And this was, yeah, this was just on the home consoles, unfortunately. And I just think it's really cool seeing a giant robot Akuma doing a Tatsu. But with that being said, let's move on to 1998. Street Fighter Alpha 3. Akuma is back and is just sort of vibing in this game until Ryu reaches his full potential. That's it. That's, that's his whole deal in this game. That's his mm. ending. So he's really just along for the ride here. And we're moving on to 1999. Street Fighter 3, Third Strike. One of our favorites around here. And... This ending, this is probably my favorite one. Like, of all time, or Uh, up until this point? Definitely up until this point. Okay. Maybe of all time. So, his ending shows him training by standing at the bottom of the ocean. He's just standing down there. The pressure isn't crushing him, and for some reason he doesn't need to breathe. During this, we also see a submarine that is searching for another lost submarine. So there's a rescue party looking for it. When they, when they find Akuma, who actually is standing on top of the wreckage of the first sub. His eyes glow red, and suddenly the wreckage of the new submarine is seen exploding up through the surface of the ocean. It just explodes into a bunch of pieces out of the ocean. So he just, like, casually murdered a bunch of people for some reason that were in submarines. This is his ending? In- That's it! He gets pissed and just destroys them and kills the people inside. Oh my god. That's it. That's so... (laughs) That's so crazy. Isn't it? It's so... It's such a small ending, but it's, like, insane. It's, like, unhinged. That one I thought was just so crazy that it's, like, one of my favorites. It just stands out a lot. It is very unhinged, yes. And Third Strike is actually the... In terms of, like, timeline in in the Street Fighter timeline. It was always the most far along game up until 6. So 6 is actually the first time we've gone beyond. So up until now, I guess Akuma was just seen in his final ending as just kind of an unhinged, violent person. And now we're getting him in 6 after that. wonder what he's going to get up to now. I'm excited about that. But there's one other game that came out in 99 that he was a part of. And this was SNK versus Capcom, The Match of the Millennium. This was an SNK-produced crossover fighter for the Neo Geo Pocket Color, and Akuma is a hidden character in it. Moving on to 2000, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. He was not in the first one. He was in X-Men vs. Street Fighter, but not Marvel vs. Capcom. It's weird. But yeah, he appears in this game. This game does not have any unique endings or anything, so he's just a playable fighter on it, he's base roster, and it's a 3 vs. 3 tag fighter. So, there you go. One other game that came out in the year 2000, Capcom vs. SNK, Millennium Fight 2000. This is the Capcom-produced crossover version. So, SNK produced the first one, this one's Capcom produced. Akuma is a ratio 4 character in this game, which I didn't know what that meant. I had no clue what that meant. I looked it up. The ratio is a rating of a character's overall strength, ranging from 1 to 4. Teams of up to four can be assembled, so you could play as up to four characters if you wanted, but their combined ratios have to go no higher than four. You can have like one really strong character, one level four character, four level ones, two number twos, you know what I mean? All that. So Akuma is the strongest you can get. Does not work well as others. The only other ones that were ratio level four were like Orochi Iori and someone else. 2001, Capcom vs. SNK2, Mark of the Millennium 2001. They were pushing these things out at this time. He's playable, and Shinakuma is the boss. This one has an ending that might be more unhinged than the last one. So in this one, this form of Akuma achieves a new level of power when a dying Rugal Bernstein pours his Orochi power into him, driving Akuma insane whitening his hair and turning his skin much darker than usual as a result of the dark power flowing through him. I just wanted to mention that because I feel like SNK is always doing the the dark skin thing. That's like a powered up thing in SNK. And his hair goes white. Oh, so it's supposed to be powered up in SNK? I guess so, Because, like, they give kind of every character that option as a skin. I wonder if it's supposed to be, like, a dark vibe where it's, like, dark and powered. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I thought it was kind of cool that he just absorbs Orochi power and that's where he gets it from in, in that game. You're like, nah. 
it's not not as unhinged as just killing random people in submarines. In no, you're opinion. right. You're right. The next one is. That's the one oh. I was mistaking it for. Oh. My mistake. This one's more unhinged. SNK versus Capcom. SVC Chaos. Have you ever heard of this game? Mm-mm. It's got a reputation. <laughs> and that's because it's really imbalanced. And I guess it just sort of feels weird. I think it looks really interesting. And I love the graphical style. So I want to check it out at some point. But that being said, this came out in 2003. Akuma is playable in it. And Shin Akuma is the boss on the Capcom side. In his ending, he defeats everyone and realizes that he no longer has any strong opponents to fight, so he leaps up into heaven and challenges God. (laughs) What game is this? This is SVC Chaos, SNK vs. Capcom. Oh, another one? Yeah, yeah. This is like the third one, fourth one. Why are they making so many of these at this time? They they mostly just had a deal. I think they had a deal (laughs) where they each got to make two of them. Okay. So, yeah, yeah it's that just was like an overload of these games. Yeah, and they all happened within like a five year period or four year period. But this one was the final one, at least for a, a while. Maybe it was the final one. Yeah, he realizes there's no one left to fight on Earth. So he jumps into heaven and challenges God. And is that where it ends? That's where it ends. Oh. It, it ends with, uh, with God standing there like, what? And he's just like, you, fight me. How interesting. Yeah, Akuma literally just says like, you, fight me. <laughs> and that's where it ends. It kind of rules. 2005, Namco Cross Capcom. This is a tactical RPG where Akuma can be one of your party members. It's on PS2, and it never left Japan. Mm. Yep. 2008, Street Fighter 4. We're really moving here. Yeah, uh, once that SNK deal ended, it was like, yeah, eh, let's let him cool off. <laughs> yeah, first it was like the 90s rush, and then it was like all the SNK crossover. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, yeah, let's put him in an RPG every couple of years or something. Yeah, he just fought God. He can just... <laughs> yeah, now he gets to be in a tactical RPG. <laughs> and be a master of puzzles. I looked up video of this, and it looked kind of cute. You got to oh. move little like chibi versions of the characters around on a screen, and it, you could choose... Each party member, you could put like position them in different spots and then make them do attacks. Yeah, it looked kind of cute. So I've never. I mean, it's it's only in Japan, so I'll never be able to play it, unfortunately. But there you go. Two thousand eight, Street Fighter Four. He had to be unlocked in this game by unlocking six other characters first, and then beating arcade mode with at least one perfect and no losses. You could also unlock him in Street Fighter 4 by purchasing either the Super or the Ultra Edition that came out years later. So he was just on the base roster for those ones. In his ending, he kills Seth, the villain of that game, and then blows up a forest. He makes a giant fireball shoot out of his entire body, and it kinda, he kind of goes nuclear and just blows up a forest. That's it. 2011, Marvel vs. Capcom 3... And Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. He was in both of these games in 2011. It's another 3 vs. 3 tag fighter. And he's unlockable in the game. He's always unlockable, right? (laughs) Very often. I wanted to mention his ending in this one as well. It says, Akuma notes that no one else is left to rival him on Earth, and he prepares to journey through the galaxy to find a worthy challenger. Leaving behind the bodies of Ryu, Wolverine, Captain America, Chun Li, and Spider Man. So I guess he killed all of them and then just goes into space. <laughs> that is wild. That's the most random shit. How is Capcom related to Marvel? Like, when did that start? They started that in the 90s. That would have been X Men Children of the Atom, that 1994 game. That That's was... what started the. Yeah connection yeah it was a capcom produced marvel game because fighting games were all the rage and i'm sure marvel was like hey make a fighting game for us because you make all kinds of fighters oh so they've just been linked ever since yeah they made a fighter and they put akuma in it wow (laughs) and they've been linked ever since huh yeah 2012 street fighter cross tekken this is a two versus two crossover tag fighter Akuma is the final boss on the Street Fighter side, and when you play him, the playable version, because the boss version is obviously way stronger, the playable version has the lowest health in the game, but he has two supers to make up for it, where everyone else only has one. Street Fighter Cross Mega Man, also 2012. A PC-only title, this game was originally being made by a fan 
until they approached Capcom with a demo of it and received funding for a full version. Wow. They brought like a working demo and a pitch for the rest of it with like art with what they wanted to do and Capcom was impressed with it and they were like, yeah, this is sweet. It's basically a Mega Man fighting game. I like the story and the creation yeah, of it. That's yeah. really, that's uh, really neat. I think that's really cool. And another thing, it was free to download and Akuma was a secret boss in it that you could only get if you mm-hmm. played really, really well up until that point. That makes sense. <laughs> 2015, Tekken 7. This is where you come in. Yeah. This is where kinda. you This is kind of where you learn <laughs> Akuma a little bit. He was a guest in Tekken 7 and living up to his legacy as a boss character. He was included in the Tekken 7 story mode as a boss like multiple times where you had to fight him throughout the years as Heihachi and Kazuya. And he was hunting them down in the game in order to pay back a debt to Kazumi. What did she do for him? It's not known what... What do you think she did? I don't know. Um, what kind hmm. of debt would Akuma need to Yeah, she has, she has a debt to Kazumi, and it's important enough that he would go to great lengths, like crossing universes and killing her husband and son. What do you think son. she did? <laughs> what did she do? Yeah, what did she do for him? What was the big favor? I don't know. I have no idea. All right, that's that's everyone's homework. Man, yeah. What did it? What the hell did You've she do? You reached the homework checkpoint. <laughs> so if what did you she can do? hear my voice, let us know what you think Kazumi did for Akuma in Tekken Seven to, yeah. to have him owe this debt. I was actually when you when you asked me that, I was about to say he was hunting down Kazuya and Heihachi in order to repay an unknown debt to Kazuma. Oh, unknown. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, no, we, nobody knows what it is. Akuma was notoriously strong during the entire lifespan of Tekken 7, and he constantly got nerfed throughout the life of this game. It was out for like seven years in pro play, and every single time he got nerfed, within 30 minutes of the patch, people would post like, oh, this is a workaround, you can just do this instead, or this changed and now this combo works, and it never worked, and he was always strong. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a lot of Akuma play from all of pretty much all of the games I've talked about today. And when I was watching Akuma replays, I mean, I've already I was already having flashbacks from when we had to fight him online first off. It was shocking how many times people would do an 80% combo into Raging Demon and just do an insta kill. But that's Akuma. 2016 Street Fighter 5. This game came out in 2015, same year as Tekken 7, but Akuma did not because he was Tekken exclusive for a year, which I think is interesting. He was the first character to release in Season 2's DLC, releasing in December 2016. In Street Fighter V, his appearance is very different, with his hair kind of growing around his neck, less like a beard and more like a lion mane. His top knot is also like right on top of his head instead of being on the back where it normally is, and it just looks kind of strange. I do also want to say, in this game, he's voiced by Richard Epcar. It's cool, but it's a little bit distracting to me because I'm used to him as Raiden. Or Geese Howard in Tekken. Right, I was going to say, the fun- <laughs> The funny thing is that Richard Epcar was being Geese Howard in Tekken 7, a game that Akuma was also in. Yeah. And then he's Akuma in Street Fighter Five. Yeah. Like, and Raiden in like and Raiden. four different yeah. games all at that time because MK releases every two years. Yep, yep. <laughs> I just wanted to mention Richard Epcar because I'm a fan. I don't like it in Street Fighter V because it's so distracting to me. I just hear Raiden. Mm-hmm. Like I'll do, I'll do a Tatsu and I just hear Raiden. And I'm like, oh god, this is weird. I can't. I tried to play Akuma in that game and I ended up switching to Dan. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because I couldn't deal with the voice. Just change his voice to Japanese. Yeah, I probably should have. I remember (laughs) when they revealed him in like 2016, I think it was. And I wasn't even a Street Fighter player at this time. And I remember seeing him and just thinking, what the fuck? Yeah, not playing that weirdo. (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) That's all I have to say about that. That was my uh, exposure to Street Fighter V Akuma back in the day. Moving on to 2024. This is the biggest jump. We move eight years into the future. Street Fighter VI. Obviously, this game is the most recent. It came out last year. And Akuma releases on May 22nd of this year. Akuma is the final Season 1 DLC character. He looks different again, but in a good way. 
I would say that it's better than the Street Fighter V Lion Man, anyways. He's got long gray hair and a white beard, so he still looks extremely overgrown, but it doesn't look like a weird mane. It just looks kind of like a wild man. In addition to his wild man hair, he has furs over his shoulders and back, and tattered karate pants. He also does not have his sandals in this game, unless you're playing the traditional like nostalgia costume, because that's here, of course. I've seen people joking online that Akuma is pissed as, as he's coming back right now, because the current Street Fighter VI version of Ryu has sandals, and Akuma does not. So people are thinking that, <laughs> that Ryu stole Akuma's sandals, oh, and Akuma no. wants to get them back. Oh my goodness. Maybe that'll end up being your mission in World Tour. Steal back your sandals from Ryu. Yeah. Anyways, in World Tour, he beats your character's ass the second you interrupt his training. Mm-hmm. And that's all we know for now. <laughs> I am kind of tempted to re-download it and see what else he does, because I just feel like that'll be really fun to see Akuma doing random shit, like using a cell phone and texting you. <laughs> I really want Akuma to text me. In his ending, he'll probably do something insane, like raging demon a bus full of people, or I don't know. It's gotta be more extreme than that. He's already... Blown up two submarines? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, you're right. He blew up a forest, he blew up uh, two submarines, he'll probably like blow up a building or something. He's becoming unhinged. Well, he believes that he must kill. Yeah, he killed Spider-Man and Ryu. <laughs> All those guys. One other thing about Street Fighter Six Akuma, he is voiced by Christopher Guerrero. So he's got a new voice in this game. And, and this is the English voice. Yeah, this is, this is the English voice. And I'm pleasantly surprised. I think it sounds good. I was mm-hmm. planning on just using the Japanese voice, but yeah, I think I'm I think I'm in. I'm all in. I'm going to go with the Christopher Guerrero English voice. I think it sounds really good. It's like more deep and like aggressive. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's a good fit too. So, that brings us up to date on his current fighters. I wanted to mention a couple other just little quick things. He's in <laughs> the SNK versus Capcom Card Fighter series. This is a series of three games that came out between 1999 and 2007. It would be like on PS1, but it would be like playing like Yu-Gi-Oh! or like Magic oh, the Gathering. Oh, okay, that's less exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and then for some reason, yeah, the first two games were on PlayStation, and then the second game was on Nintendo DS. Or third one. Hmm. The third game was on Nintendo DS. <laughs> They're like, yeah, if you want to play the third one, you got to do it by yourself. On Nintendo. Hold it in your hands. Yeah. <laughs> Another game, Asura's Wrath. This is a Capcom game, and I don't know a ton about it. It's Asura is like some sort of god dude that fights other gods. I don't know. It came out in 2012, and Akuma was a DLC boss in this game that you couldn't truly defeat. You could only fight him to a standstill, and apparently the fight lasted 500 years. What? <laughs> crazy, right? Akuma's always just out here doing crazy shit. That's what we... I think that's what we're learning so far. He is in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate 2018 as a spirit. And next to that, I just wrote a question mark because I don't know what a spirit is. <laughs> but he was released as a spirit when... <laughs> Akuma was released as a spirit when Ryu and Ken came out as playable characters. He's also in Monster Hunter Rise 2021. In this game, he is an unlockable skin for your hunter that you get if you complete a limited time crossover challenge for Street Fighter V. So you're the Street Fighter V Akuma. Mm-hmm. It also changes his move sets to Tatsu's punches, kicks, all that fun stuff. So you're not using the weapon. But you can actually equip weapons with him. You can equip the giant swords with Akuma or guns or whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. So I was watching okay. footage of I was watching footage of four people play all they were all playing Akuma and they just had different colored hair and they were all just using like guns and throwing barrels and doing tatsus and it looked hilarious. In this game, he is voiced by Richard Fkar. So, fun fact. Monster Hunter? Yeah, in the Monster Hunter game, the Akuma Isn't skin. Isn't it just a skin? Yeah, the Akuma <laughs> skin is voiced by Richard Epcar. What? Let's talk about some TV and movies a little bit. Maybe we can watch some of these someday, because some of them sound really cool. Street Fighter Alpha, the animation, and Street Fighter Alpha Generations. He's featured heavily throughout the plot of these ones. He's also in Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. In the background, sitting against a wall. 
<laughs> just hidden. I love that. Uh, let's talk about TV a little bit. He's in. Apparently, there are a lot of different animated Street Fighter series. I did not know this, but Street Fighter the Animated Series. It's an American series from the 90s. It had like 60 episodes or something like that. I don't really have anything notable on that one. It looked like kind of goofy 90s animation. And then another one, a Japanese series called Street Fighter 2 V. He makes cameo appearances throughout this. It's a 29 episode series and he shows up in the background of 11 episodes. This was like 94 to 95. And it looks pretty cool. And I saw some of the cameo shots of it, and it's just hilarious. It's It'll be Akuma at the airport waiting for, like, his bag on the luggage thing. <laughs> what? Or, yeah, or, like, Akuma at a restaurant with a lady having a date. But he's just wearing a gi, and she's dressed what? up. What? Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't sound like a real <laughs> It's show. real. No, it's real. This doesn't sound like things Akuma would be doing. When he's not hidden, he's out there on dates with ladies. And... <laughs> or... Jet setting. Jet setting. Yeah, he was at the airport, <laughs> and yeah, there was another time where he was staring a man down at a restaurant. Sounds like an of... episode of Always Sunny. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Who would be the man? Would it be like Ryu? <laughs> you can make that scene with Ken oh my God. with uh, Akuma looking at Ryu. Yeah. About the sandals. My sandals. Give me my. <laughs> give me back my sandals. <laughs> oh yeah, I really like the picture of him having dinner with a lady. He's just holding a drink. It's awesome. He's in a live action web series similar to Mortal Kombat Legacy. It's called Street Fighter Assassin's Fist. He's also in a ton of comics, mangas, he's been action figures, he's in mobile games, crossover mobile games, you name it. He's always popping up in things. And half the time he's a secret, so maybe he's there and you just don't know it. Mm hmm. Look exactly. around, you might see some Akuma in your life. Anyways, that brings us up to date, so. What are your thoughts on Akuma after all of this? I feel like the, the special things I knew about him didn't come up, so I guess... What were the, what, what did you know about um, him? There's some story about a baby or like a child. Oh, yeah. He, okay. And then <laughs> there's also the story about how Elena is like the only person that he could potentially be friends with in third strike i think it's hinted at in her ending that yeah. she's like kind of friends with akuma yeah and then they actually take selfies together in street fighter 4 <laughs> yeah akuma and elena are friends i guess i should have mentioned that and then what was the other one that you mentioned it was, oh, it was the Isn't baby. About, like raising a baby? Yeah. <laughs> Originally in Street Fighter V, before they gave him the weird lion mane and stuff, they thought about making him this country traveler, like, I don't know, backwoods, <laughs> backwoods traveler dude that would have a baby strapped to his chest that he found and raised. So Akuma was going to be fighting with a baby on his chest. And then eventually the producers kind of thought, maybe that's not a good idea because they're going to get... It's going to get punched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to get like sumo slammed or whatever. And, like, you know, it's going to get butt slammed. And uh -huh. Bad things are going to happen to this baby. So maybe we shouldn't give Akuma a child. Yeah. But. They didn't have it planned out like uh, right. Sam Show. Right, right. Yeah, Sam Show just follows you around on screen. <laughs> yeah, and you can put it to sleep. Yeah, for some reason. It's a strange, like, concept that they almost went with, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, it really is. It's weird to see Akuma... Why would you even come up with that? Right? It, it's really weird to see him interacting with, like, members of the community that are not fighters. Is there a reason why they went with two different names? Uh, East versus West? Goki versus yeah. Akuma? Not that I know of. Because... I, don't they just mean the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. And so I wonder, like, was Goki going to be... Like, would that have been, at the time, too close to something else that was, like, popular in America? Maybe. And they're like, we should name him something else so that, like, this doesn't get mixed up with this other big thing. Oh, maybe... You know what? I th <laughs> I'm just making this up, but maybe it was because Goku... Dragon Ball oh, was just getting popular in the 90s in America. Right. Dragon Ball was from the 80s, but it didn't get to America till the 90s. Mm -hmm. And that's when Street Fighter came around. So maybe they were like, we don't want to bring over Goku and Goki at the same time. They both have this spiky hair. Yeah. And fireballs. Yeah, you want it to be distinct. Yeah. It's Let's call him one leather off. Yeah. I think that's a pretty plausible theory. I guess let us know if 
you agree or disagree or if you know the actual reason yeah we'd love to hear it yeah there could there could very well be a reason that i just didn't find on my journey this week but it's possible it's possible overall i had uh a lot of fun watching him, especially in the weird crossover games that I didn't know existed. I love seeing Akuma in different forms, mech form, cyber form where he has wings. I'm looking forward to what he does in Street Fighter VI, and I'm I'm really looking forward to playing him. New man? Probably. I think so. I think so. It better be after all this DJ lamenting. <laughs> I know, right? What if I'm just like <laughs> crying about DJ and then it ends up like, oh, I don't actually like Akuma. Yeah, like, oh, I guess I'm still going to play DJ. <laughs> I don't know. We'll or see. Or Jerry or Jamie. There's a lot of... Pl- there, I feel like I'm interested in a lot of characters right now. Yeah. But Akuma is at the top of the list. Or Kimberly, if you buy Outfit 3. Yeah, because I got to look cool. Oh, one other exciting thing about Akuma coming out and a patch coming out is that all of the DLC characters will get their costume 3 along with that. So Rashid, Ed, Aki, and Akuma. Yeah. Costume threes. There was like a leaked photo at one point a while ago that was just Akuma in a thong, basically. And uh, I really hope that's it. It's like the Urian thong. It really is just like that. It's that's just what, that's who I thought of when I saw it. It's like buff ass, long haired, bearded, wild man, uh... Street Fighter Six Akuma, in a Urian thong. And I really hope that's his outfit three because I think I I think I'll play it. <laughs> I don't know if it will be. I oh, think it'd be man. crazy if that's what it is. I don't. What do you think it'll be? What's your prediction? I have no idea. I have hmm. no idea for him. I think that's all I got. Let us know if you'll be playing him in Street Fighter Six very soon. Cam will. I think he looks really good, but I probably won't purchase him unless <laughs> unless that underwear outfit comes out <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just have to see about that won't we yeah we'll have to see yeah i hope we get the underwear outfit but i would also be cool with like a tuxedo or something you know yeah something fancy yeah you mm-hmm. think he's gonna dress up like ken i want him to have a suit do you <laughs> hold on would you consider ken's outfit dressed up no it's <laughs> jeans and a jacket <laughs> and like boots. I feel like he did something with his hair though it's long I don't know <laughs> I don't see it as dressed up I see it as more like a biker like he yeah, looks like, he, I... he's got like boots on and a leather jacket and he looks like a little like street punk oh okay then I guess maybe it's really maybe Akuma's really just gonna dress down too maybe he'll just wear jeans yeah something casual Akuma in jeans maybe it'll be that uh that business outfit that we saw well thank you for bringing us the Akuma knowledge today absolutely I hope you had fun listening and learning what was your favorite thing that you learned probably the third strike ending i feel like that's really stuck with me visually even though i haven't seen it oh yeah (laughs) i feel like i'm just like i can just picture it in my head and it made a big impact so yeah he just murders some people in submarines (laughs) because they were down there there we go (laughs) that's my favorite akuma thing that i learned today all right and uh yeah we're gonna see you later we're gonna see you next week but before that we hope you'll join us tuesday night this coming tuesday night at 8 p.m est on the fight rise discord it's called rise and fight this is going to be our last live show on there before our fight on stream so yeah we hope you'll join us for our next live show that is tuesday night at 8 p.m est on the fight rise discord so there will be a link in the description to join that It is a blast every time, so we hope you'll join us. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Wake Up 3. You can follow along on Twitter at WakeUp3FGC. I'm your host, Molly. You can follow me on Twitter at ConCut. That's K-A-H-N-K-U-T. Cam, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter and most other social media. At Big Rock Online. At Big Rock Online. This is Wake Up 3, signing off. Bye.
say Street Fighter is the original time or the oldest time. What? <laughs> the, I, now sneakers? I have to look. Sneakers? Ryu and Am sneakers? <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds fake. <laughs>